A $1.6 billion upgrade is underway to save one of America's most critical rail links, the East River Tunnel on the Northeast Corridor. Severely damaged by Hurricane Sandy, this century-old lifeline is getting a 21st century overhaul to keep trains moving safely and reliably for decades to come. So what is actually going on inside this old tunnel? And can Amtrak pull off this massive project without paralyzing the busiest rail line in the country? Join on the trains on this dramatic journey and see how it's being rebuilt for the future. Tunnel Upgrade Currently, the East River Tunnel Overhaul is on a fairly tight schedule. In May 2024, Amtrak signed a construction contract and began preparatory work at Sunnyside Yard in Queens and near 32nd Street in Manhattan. The massive project was originally scheduled to start earlier, but it was pushed back to complete several rerouting projects. On Memorial Day weekend, May 9, 2025, Amtrak officially closed one of the four tunnels to begin a full overhaul. For the first 10 days or so, they've been cleaning up, moving power cables, and replacing wooden rail supports, while keeping trains moving through the other three tunnels. Then, the heavy work begins. Inside Line 1, all the old rails, rotten bench walls, outdated electrical and signal systems are removed, ready to be reconcreted, new drainage and modern cable systems installed. In parallel, the three remaining tunnels, Lines 2, 3 and 4, are still operating normally, but are also being touched up once, from sealing water leaks, replacing third rails, to upgrading electrical and signal systems to handle the extra load when there are only three gates left. The plan is that Line 2 will take about 18 months to construct, meaning it will reopen for trains by the end of 2026. Then it will be Line 1's turn to close to do the same, and if everything goes smoothly, by 2027 or 2028, all four tunnels will be completely overhauled. In other words, now, at the end of 2025, Amtrak is focusing all its efforts on the transformation of Line 2, both demolishing and rebuilding sections, while the remaining three tubes struggle to keep hundreds of trains running each day. The upgrade included the removal of the entire old track system and its replacement with a direct-fix track system, removing the traditional gravel layer and fixing the track directly to the concrete frame, which increased stability, reduced vibration, reduced maintenance costs, and made it better suited to high train density of up to 450 trains per day. In parallel, the concrete walls and the belt walls were reinforced or newly built. The belt walls not only supported the power and signal cables, but also provided an escape route for staff and passengers in the event of an incident. A range of essential systems were comprehensively modernized. New high-voltage cables replaced the old network that had been corroded by sea salt. Modern electronic signals allowed for more precise traffic management. The drainage system was expanded to prevent flooding, and the ventilation system was improved to reduce humidity and control temperature in the tunnel. In addition, hundreds of new automatic smoke and fire detectors will be installed, all meeting NFPA 130 standards the highest safety standard for urban and interurban rail infrastructure. Above ground, the project will add signal and instrumentation buildings in Queens, add high voltage power lines, and upgrade infrastructure at vent shafts in Manhattan. No new tunnels will be dug, and all upgrades will take place within the 100-year-old structure, but construction standards will be based on the latest technology and safety regulations. This allows for cost optimization while maintaining the vital connectivity of the Northeast Corridor. During the early summer shutdown, approximately 24,000 feet of running track, 12,000 feet of third track, 8,000 rails, and 8,000 cubic yards of crushed rock. The crew is currently removing approximately 24,000 feet of retaining wall along the three-mile tunnel. Removing 20,000 cubic yards of concrete is equivalent to removing more than 650 construction trash cans. The age and unique composition of the concrete made the demolition work very complex as the wall was designed to last more than a century with concrete, steel reinforcement, terracotta pipes, and other reinforcing materials. To speed up the process, the contractor used a Brock robotic demolition machine in six positions, assisted by a hydraulic rock splitter. The machine has rubber wheels to help maneuver in tight spaces and keep the operator safe from falling material. But making these upgrades a reality requires strong funding and partnerships. Funding and partnership to finance the East River Tunnel, Amtrak must build a multi-tiered financing structure, combining federal, state, and regional funding. 
The most important milestone came in November 2023, when Amtrak secured $1.26 billion from the Federal Railroad Administration. This represents 80% of the total $1.6 billion cost, showing that the federal government is serious about upgrading the Northeast Rail Corridor. Not only Amtrak, the MTA also contributed with a maximum commitment of $432 million, of which $28 million was spent early to meet the matching capital conditions. For the MTA, this was a must, because their Long Island Railroad relies entirely on this tunnel to move hundreds of thousands of people into Manhattan every day. In New Jersey, NJ Transit also benefits directly because it needs this tunnel to get in and out of Sunnyside Yard. So on May 8, 2024, their board approved $88.4 million for the project, not only sharing the responsibility, but also affirming the importance of the joint project for all three operators, Amtrak, LIRR, and NJ Transit. Thanks to the combination of federal funding as the backbone and commitments from New York and New Jersey, the project finally has the financial footing to get off the ground. If you want to see the weight of the project, you have to know the story behind it that is more than a century old. The story of East River Tunnel. The tunnel opened on September 8, 1910. It is a system of four single-tube tunnels that run under the East River, connecting Penn Station in Manhattan with Queens and New Jersey. Thanks to its strategic location, this tunnel has become the blood vessel of the Northeastern Railway Corridor. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, it carried an average of 300,000 passengers per day, or about 450 trains of Amtrak, Long Island Railroad, and New Jersey Transit. But then, in October 2012, Superstorm Sandy hit, flooding the two tunnels with more than 3.5 million gallons of seawater. The saltwater corroded and damaged the electrical, signal, drainage, and concrete systems inside. Although it was still running for a while, problems kept occurring. Water leaks, broken equipment, malfunctioning signals, causing repeated service interruptions. Amtrak made a straightforward assessment. The tunnel was more than 114 years old, and without major repairs, it would no longer be reliable. Therefore, the federal and state governments agreed to implement a comprehensive rehabilitation program to extend the tunnel's lifespan by at least 100 years. To be honest, this is not just a matter of passenger transportation, but also an economic story. The East River Tunnel is the bottleneck of the entire NEC corridor, a corridor that contributes nearly 20% of the U.S. GDP. A single incident here could paralyze the entire New York rail system, dragging down millions of passengers and the regional economy. After Hurricane Sandy, Amtrak, the MTA, and NJ Transit all understood that only a comprehensive overhaul could save the East River Tunnel. But the project has been stalled for more than 10 years because of sky-high costs and concerns that it would cripple Penn Station. Anyway, luckily the upgrade project is underway. Do you know anything more about this tunnel project? Comment below and let me know. The importance of Hudson River Tunnel the main goal is to build a new 2.4-mile-long twin tunnel under the Hudson River, connecting New Jersey with Manhattan, while also repairing the old North River Tunnel, which is more than 110 years old. The old tunnel has been badly degraded, especially after Superstorm Sandy in 2012, when salt water eroded inside. The bottom line is, the entire Northeastern Railway Line, which connects Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., is almost entirely dependent on these two old tunnels. This is the busiest line in the United States, with more than 800,000 passengers a day, and 240,000 people cross the Hudson River alone. But the old tunnel only runs about 24 trains per hour and is prone to breakdowns, leaks, corrosion, causing two-thirds of the trips to be delayed. If the tunnel is forced to close without a new tunnel, capacity will be reduced by up to 75% causing losses of about $100 million per day and greatly affecting the jobs, supply chains, and lives of millions of people. All of which creates a disadvantage for the entire region. So Project $16 billion is launched. So what will be upgraded? What will the new bridge be like? Before we go to the next part, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow the modern trains of the world. The New Tunnel Project. The project focuses on building a pair of 2.4 mile about 3.9 kilometers, twin tunnels, each 28 feet, about 8.5 meters in diameter, connecting North Bergen, New Jersey to Manhattan, New York. 
The top of the tunnel will be 25 to 50 feet below the Hudson River, ensuring safety from flooding and high water pressure. The new tunnel is designed to use modern TBMs combined with floodgates, advanced ventilation and drainage systems, and many other technologies to ensure sustainable operation for decades. In addition to the main tunnel, the project will expand the infrastructure system connecting 9 miles 14.5 kilometers of new track, build overpasses, viaducts, retaining walls, and install a concrete shell at Hudson Yards in Manhattan, which will directly connect the tunnel to Penn Station, New York's most important transportation hub. When the new tunnel is completed in a decade, the two existing tunnels will undergo extensive renovations, including replacing the track system, repairing and reinforcing the concrete structure, installing floodgates and waterproofing, which will extend the life of the old tunnels by decades while maintaining their ability to serve millions of passengers. Technically, the project is divided into 10 separate packages, including digging a 7,250-foot, about 2.2 kilometers, long under-river tunnel, stabilizing the ground in the riverbed area of 100 feet, 30 meters, wide with concrete columns and temporary dikes, construction of a 700-foot tunnel in Manhattan, and surface and access works in New Jersey, including tunneling through Bergen Hills slash Hudson Palisades and connecting to the existing NEC line. In August 2025, GDC announced that two massive tunnel boring machines for the New Jersey section are nearly complete. The Hudson Yards Concrete Shell Section 3 project is the final section that will allow the new tunnel to connect to Penn Station. HYCC3 will extend the existing concrete shell diagonally from 11th Avenue to 30th Street, measuring approximately 500 feet long, 60 feet wide, and 60 feet high. The 3.5 to 10 foot thick reinforced concrete structure is designed to withstand the loads of the structures above, while a waterproof membrane covers the entire perimeter. Construction of the concrete shell under Hudson Yards began in 2012, with the 800-foot-long Section 1 between 10th and 11th Avenues starting in August 2013, and the 110-foot-long Section 2 under the 11th Avenue Viaduct completed in 2018. HYCC3 will complete the final connection for the new tunnel to be operational. Once the new tunnel is completed, the system will not only maintain operations while the old tunnel is repaired, but will also double capacity from 24 to 48 trips per hour. If Penn Station is upgraded, the new tunnel will have a modern flood control system, new electrical and signaling systems, more durable materials, allowing trains to run at a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour. It will also add more than nine miles of track to Penn Station, the busiest train station in the United States. Funding and Timeline The Hudson River Tunnel Project is a key part of the Gateway Program and is considered the largest rail project in the United States in the 21st century. At a cost of about $16 billion, the project is managed by the Gateway Development Commission, a partnership between Amtrak, NJ Transit, New York State, New Jersey State, and the federal government. More than half of the funding comes from the federal government, with the rest from state budgets and infrastructure bonds. This is also a typical project in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021, showing the determination to upgrade America's core infrastructure. The project creates more than 95,000 jobs, reduces congestion on the road, cuts emissions, and increases resilience to climate change. In the long term, this is a turning point to ensure the connection of major cities, strengthen the economic strength of the U.S., and pave the way for the next projects in the Gateway Program. According to the plan, 2023 to 2024, to build the ground and tunnel entrance. 2025 to 2029, to dig the tunnel and install the system. 2030, to put the new tunnel into operation. Then, the old North River Tunnel will be completely renovated from 2029 to 2035. In fact, progress tracking at key locations shows no major delays, with the project still described as on track for completion by 2035. Construction on the river continues with a focus on ecosystem protection, including pumping grout into the mud to stabilize the riverbed without affecting the natural flow or the spawning season for sturgeon. In Manhattan, 
the Hudson Yards concrete shell is under construction, reaching more than 50% of its volume. While in New Jersey, work on Tunnelay Avenue is nearing completion, preparing for the installation of a tunnel boring machine and connection to existing rail lines. As of September 2025, the Hudson River Tunnel project is progressing well, marking important progress on both the riverbank and underwater. So, is this project really on track, or are storms ahead? Challenges. First of all, the extremely high cost, about $16 billion, has many people worried that if there are technical problems, delays, or increased material prices, the budget could increase significantly. Tunneling under the Hudson River, where water pressure is high and geology is complex, along with drilling through limestone and clay hills in New Jersey, requires modern technology, advanced TBM drilling machines, and extremely careful supervision. A small mistake in tunnel drilling, ground stabilization, or water pressure control can slow down progress and increase costs. In addition, the construction also has a major impact on people's lives. Noise, vibration, and traffic congestion in densely populated areas such as North Bergen, Hoboken, or Manhattan affect surrounding residents and businesses. At the same time, environmental protection measures such as stream retention, riverbed stabilization, and sturgeon habitat protection complicate the construction schedule. Another challenge is the dependence on future ancillary projects, such as the expansion and modernization of Penn Station or upgrades to other NEC lines. If these projects are not implemented, the transportation efficiency and connectivity of the new tunnel may not be optimal immediately after completion. In addition, the long construction period of many years also creates pressure to maintain the quality of the project, stabilize the staff, and keep the progress according to the plan. In short, although the project promises to change the face of transportation and the economy of the Northeast, to be successful, engineers and managers must overcome many difficulties at the same time. So, is the Hudson River Tunnel up to the challenge of transforming travel for millions of passengers? That's all for today. See ya!